guys welcome back or welcome to our channel it's serena from the falco family where we make videos about education and lifestyles we are the falco family brian serena cameron kendall and savannah a family of filmmakers exploring the truth about education learning to document our adventures in homeschool and life and tell stories of how we live and what we learn so today i am back for another book haul I have a nice decent stack in front of me. So I'll start with this section here. I'm pretty sure that this is like fantasy slash magical realism-ish. So the first one I have is When You Trap a Tiger. I'm pretty sure this is the Newberry winner from maybe, is it last year? So when Lily and her family move in with her sick grandmother, a magical tiger straight out of her Halmani's Korean folk tales arrives prompting Lily to unravel a secret family history, which y'all know I love a secret family history because <laughs> families are complicated and I can imagine them being so complicated to children. So I love when they intertwine a secret family history and there's something for us to just kind of uncover and talk about. Long, long ago, Halmani stole something from the tigers. Now they want it back. And when one of the tigers approaches, Lily with a deal return what her grandmother stole in exchange for Halmani's help. Lily is tempted to agree, but deals with tigers are never what they seem. With the help of her sister and her new friend, Ricky, Lily must find her voice and the courage to face a tiger. I love anything about finding a voice, okay? Next up, I have Bob. This is by Wendy Mass and Rebecca Steed. Kendall actually really loved the, the back synapsis of this story. Here are some of the things I did while I awaited Livy's return. Number one, counted to 987,654,321 six times. Number two, built a Lego pirate ship 63 times in the dark. Number three, played chess against a Lego pirate monkey and still lost most of the time number four tried to do the hokey pokey like Liv had taught me but there's not much room to turn oneself around in this narrow closet without hitting the walls number five cried but only once um number six okay twice each day but only for the first year number seven thought of all the reasons that might explain why Livy didn't come back for me ah! <laughs> so that is bob the next one I have is the two in the series. I have um, Sarah Penny Packer's Pax and then um, Pax Journey Home. We've actually read both of these and these have mixed reviews because it is a bit of a sad story, but we happened to enjoy them and I happen to enjoy her writing. But again, this is supposed to be a haul, not really, you know, a review of the books. So we'll just leave it at that. I have a few classics. I love middle grade is my favorite genre but I also want to read more um, adult fiction and it's really challenging for me but I am trying different things to figure out what type of adult fiction that I really enjoy so this one is called A Tree in Brooklyn by Betsy Smith this is a classic um, it is about a young girl's coming of age in the 20th century in Brooklyn New York and I heard it's slow and steady and I'm really interested in seeing about the writing and reading a slow and steady story. I have two in our classic collections. I have The Secret Garden. At first, people refuse to believe that a strange new thing can be done. Then they begin to hope it can be done. Then they see it can be done. Then it is done and all the world wonders why it was not done centuries ago. That's all I needed to read. <laughs> So you will find uh, one of my hesitations for doing more book videos is that so many booktubers can run through like the synapses and the books and give you a good summary of what the book is about that makes it so enticing and makes you want to read it. You're probably not going to get that here. Okay, <laughs> so I'm going to show you what I got, why I got it. And then eventually I'll show you how we read it and what we enjoyed about it. Um, I don't like to know too much about stories when I go into them. That's how I watch TV. That's how I watch movies. I like to not know too much um, so that I can just experience it without having any preconceived ideas of what the thing is going to be like. So um, this type of stuff like that written on the back is what um, what I like to read. So I have The Secret Garden. So next up I have Aesop's 
fables slow and steady wins the race this is an interesting one i wanted to have it on my shelf friends and i want to read it from cover to cover and i haven't done that but some of these illustrations are kind of creepy some of these um, stories are kind of questionable, but I want to be able to say that um, we've read through, flipped through, skimmed through, gone through um, some here and there. So we will see how it goes. Um, I got it for a really good price. I wanted to add it to our collection because I do think it's important to have things on in your library the stuff you love and things that's in your library for you to think critically through and work ideas thoughts and ideas out so i have aesop's fables next up i have a ya a young adult fiction with the fire on high i am halfway through this book i haven't finished it yet but that's okay brian did i didn't we were supposed to be buddy reading it and i didn't get completely through it but i can tell already that young adult is not going to be my thing but i do want to develop an appreciation for it this is about imani santiago's life making tough decisions and doing what she has to what has to be done for her daughter and her abuela. I love that she has a love of culinary arts and cooking. I am looking forward to working my way through this one. Let's talk some nonfiction, friends. I have a couple more over there. This one is The Trouble with Diversity, How We Learn to Love Identity and Ignore Inequality by Walter Ben Michaels. I think really, I don't really need to explain it any more than that. Uh, I am trying to build up um, a collection of books that dives deeper into diversity and identity. So I am excited to read this one and tab it all up. And hopefully I'll be able to share in one way or the other. The next one I have is, I guess, more of a textbook style, A History of Asian American Strangers from a Different Shore by Ronald Takaki. He's also the author of A Different Mirror. This is the updated and revised version. An extraordinary blend of narrative history, personal recollection, and oral testimony. Ronald presents a sweeping history of Asian Americans. He writes of the Chinese who laid tracks for the transcontinental railroad, of plantation laborers in the cane fields of Hawaii, of picture brides marrying strangers in hope of becoming part of the American dream. He tells stories of Japanese Americans behind the barbed wire of U.S. camps during World War II, refugees tragically unable to adjust to Wisconsin's alien climate and culture, and Asian American students stigmatized by the stereotype of the model minority. I have read a few pages in this book so far. I'm really looking forward to working my way through it over the years. Next up, I have For the Children's Sake. This is the Foundations of Education for Home and School by Susan Schaefer Macaulay. I got this one, I don't know where. It was very early on in my homeschool journey and I have read halfway through it. Um, I really just enjoy reading text with open eyes. Um, I'm looking forward to just being able to dive in a bit further as I continue to study education. But this one has been a nice one for me to consider what are my thoughts and beliefs on education and what I want um, my children's education to be and what our hopes and dreams for the future of education are in general. So I'm going to have like a nice little stack or collection of books that are all about education philosophy. And this is one of them from a Christian perspective. Next up, I have Unruly Americans and the Origins of the Constitution by Woody Hulton. It appends what we think we know of the Constitution's origins by telling the history of the average American who challenged the framers of the Constitution and forced on them the revisions that produced the document we now venerate. The framers who gathered in Philadelphia in 1787 were determined to reverse America's post-revolutionary war style slide into democracy. Holton provides the startling discovery that the primary purpose of the Constitution was simply put to make America more attractive to investment. This eye-opening interpretation of the Constitution captures how the framers' original draft was received by citizens and how the same class of Americans that produced the Shays' Rebellion in Massachusetts produced the Constitution as we know it now. 
So again, excited to read this one. The next one I have is called The Read Aloud Family by the founder of The Read Aloud Revival, Sarah McKenzie. I like to have, I do have a nice little collection of books all about reading culture and reading lifestyle. I would like to do a video that kind of breaks down my review of all of them and how helpful I felt like they were or not. Um, we're pretty big in our reading lifestyle already, so it's nice to just have this on audiobook and listen to it in the background when I'm able to. So I kind of slowly introduce these types of books. So I'm excited to have this one on our shelves. Um, let's get through the rest of these nonfiction books. The next one I have is Will. This is the autobiography of Will Smith, an American entertainer <laughs> and movie star. So I pretty much read this book already. If you let Brian tell it, if you let my husband tell it, he will say maybe not. But whenever Brian reads a book, Serena reads a book, okay? Because that's how much he likes to talk about it and give me the play-by-play. -play. And basically, I read the book, okay? So um, we'll share more about this in the future. But I... This book was really all encompassing. It was just storytelling, his whole lifestyle, lessons broken down. It was just really good. And I can say that because I read it. <laughs> so this is the autobiography of Will Smith. Next up, I have two devotionals. I think I'm going to have a separate video about my collection of devotionals, but I just briefly mention them here. I have Rick Warren's The Purpose Driven Life, 100 Illustrated Devotions for Children. And then I have Praying Girls Devotional, 60 Days to Shape Your Heart and Grow Your Faith Through Prayer by Sheila Walsh. I like to pick these up when they are so well priced and even if they're not a good fit for the current moment, it's always really good to give me a gauge for, you know, just flipping through them gives me a gauge for how I can move forward and like Bible studies and Bible lessons. And so I like to have, you know, build my collection in that way. So next up is my stack of contemporaries. I have Meg Medina's Mercy Suarez Changes Gears. Is this the first or second book? I can't remember. Ooh. I think this is the first book. I'm pretty sure this is the first book, but at some point in another haul, I will have the second book because I'm pretty sure we have that one too. So this is a contemporary about Mercy Suarez. Um, and she's never been like the other kids at Seward Pines Academy. Isn't that like always the story? She doesn't have a big house or take fancy vacations. She's a scholarship student who lives with her extended family in three little houses they call La Casitas. And she knew sixth grade would be different, but she didn't know how different and not just at school. Um, back at La Casitas, her beloved grandfather has been acting strangely and no one will tell Mercy what's going on. What will take? What will it take to make her family face the issue that they have been avoiding? Like I've said, I love a good family secret, family complexity type of story. So I think Cameron has read through both of these books already, and I'm excited to catch up with him. Next up, I have Stacy McNulty, who is the author of *The Miscalculations of a Lightning Girl*, which um, was a read early on that we enjoyed. Uh, this is called *Millionaire for Millionaires* for the month, and it's all about this challenge to spend upwards of five million dollars in 30 days. And the rules are: no buying houses on or other investments, no buying gifts for people, no telling anyone about the challenge and the prize is 10 million to spend however you want can you do it so next we have any day with you i love a good like multi-generational story and this is one of them um, I have a shiny new idea. 12-year-old Kaya and her family uh, live near the beach in Santa Monica and the fun of summer and movie making, I'm pretty sure this is why I put this in the cart, <laughs> is all around them. She loves using special effects makeup to turn her friends into magical creatures. They're even making a short film to enter a contest. All of this you guys know that we love because we are a family of filmmakers ourselves. Um, she also, so I really want to have a whole collection of filmmaking related included books to help the kids really feel like, whoa, like this is who we are. So she also loves spending time with her great grandpa um, who has lived with her family her whole life. Uh, he decides it's time to return to his homeland in the Philippines. She's devastated. She can't imagine life without him. So she comes up with a way to convince him to stay. Her family shares stories about her great grandpa's past, including his service during World War II and his early years in America. It gives her a new perspective and she begins to see how his sacrifices made her family's present life possible and what winning 
really means. Any books, again, that are multi-generational that really help to tie, you know, the lives together and get kids to understand the importance of those that came before them and those that come after them is really a big deal in my book. So this is Any Day With You. Okay, next up I have Take Back the Block. I have several of these on our library shelves <laughs> um, because they were buddy reads that I just kind of pass out to their friends um, by Crystal D. Giles. This is her um, debut novel, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it says, Some Things Are Worth Fighting For. So this book is about Wes Henderson. He has great style. He's in the sixth grade. Um, and he loves hanging out with his crew. They play video games and all that jazz. Um, but what he wants to think about at the start of the school year is not protests that his parents are always dragging him into. Uh, so his parents are activists for their community. Uh, but when a powerful real estate developer makes an offer to buy Kensington Oaks, the neighborhood West was, has lived in his whole life, everything changes. The grownups are supposed to have all the answers, but all they're doing is arguing. Even West's best friends are fighting and some of them may be moving. Wes isn't about to give up on the only home he's ever known without a fight. He's always been good at puzzles and he knows there must be a missing piece that will solve this puzzle and save the Oaks. But can he find it before it's too late? So this is a book that just kind of like touches on gentrification. It talks about activism and it really explores like discovering purpose for kids, which I think is really important really tapping into the things that matter friendship family all of that stuff so i enjoyed this book and i'm not supposed to be telling you about books i enjoyed i'm just supposed to be hauling them all right next up i have a little bit of a mystery um this is every missing piece by melanie conklin so maddie Gaines sees danger everywhere she looks at the bus stop around the roller rink out her window especially by the ocean when she meets a mysterious boy setting booby traps in North Carolina woods. She suspects the worst. She's certain she found him, the boy who went missing. She's certain she found Billy Holcomb, the boy who went missing in the fall, except maybe it's not him. It's been six months since they disappeared and who will believe her anyway? Definitely not her mom or her stepdad or the chief or the chief of police. As Maddie tries to uncover the truth, Ghosts from her own past surface, her best friend starts to slip away, and Maddie's world tilts once again. Can she put the pieces of her life back together, even if some of them are lost forever? Love a good mystery. Fun fact, Savannah's favorite genre is mystery. So this one is every missing piece. Next up, I have Dennis Ever After. This happens to be on Cameron's top 10 list. I'm pretty sure this is by Tony Abbott. Goodbye isn't forever. This is a really interesting story that I have not read yet, but I've heard like the recaps from Cameron here and there. So I'm excited to jump in and read it and figure out what about the story he enjoys so much. It's a little bit different. Dennis Keegan is dead. He's okay with that. Port Haven, the place where souls go, is actually pretty nice. Sure, there are some things about his life and how he ended how it ended he can't quite recall but that's how it's supposed to be remembering could prevent dennis from moving on to what's next however something is standing in his way his twin brother matt can't let go of him and as long as the living are holding on to his memory dennis can't rest in peace so he returns home to find out why only to realize that the circumstances surrounding his death are not at all what he imagined to uncover the truth about what happened, Dennis teams up with Matt, but leaving Port Haven for too long has painful consequences for Dennis, and Matt's obsession with his brother's passing is driving a wedge between his still grieving parents. Can the boys solve the mystery without breaking apart the family Dennis left behind? So it's moving, it's funny, it's suspenseful, and I think that's why Cameron enjoyed it so much. So I'm excited to jump in and figure it out with him. And it has a really beautiful cover that I don't know if you can see. There it is, Dennis, Dennis Ever After. Next up is All the Grace on Green Street by Laura Tucker. This is, I'm pretty sure, a story about an artist, <laughs> which that's almost an immediate drop in my bag. This is Soho in 1981. So technically it's a historical fiction. I don't know, you tell me. 12-year-old um, Olympia, love her name, is an artist and in her neighborhood, that's normal. Um, her dad and his business partner uh, bring antique paintings back to life while her mother makes intricate sculptures in a corner of their loft, leaving Ali to roam the streets of New York with her best friend Richard and Alex, drawing everything that catches their eye. Then everything falls apart. 
Ollie's dad disappears in the middle of the night, leaving her only a cryptic note and instructions to destroy it. Her mom has gone to bed and she's not getting up. Apollo is hiding something, Alex is acting strange, and Richard has questions about the mysterious stranger he saw outside. And someone keeps calling, looking for a missing piece of art. Olympia knows her dad is the key, but first she has to find him and time is running out. Love it. <laughs> All the grades on Green Street. Excited to read that one. And then lastly, I have my stack of picture books. We Are the Gardeners by Joanna Gaines. And I'm sure that most of you have seen it and read it and love it. And next up, I have Painting Stories, The Life of Librarian and Storyteller, Pura Belpre. Did I say that right? Love a good story about a librarian, about a bookstore. All of those things need to get into my collection as soon as possible. So we have grandpa stories. I like hard hitting um, picture books. <laughs> I know that that doesn't always seem wonderful, but emotional intelligence in our household is very important. Um, so I love books like this. Um, I love to have them. I love to see them. Uh, this is Grandpa Stories, a book of remembering. If all the world were memories, the past would be rooms I could visit, and in each room would be my grandpa. This story is just beautiful. The illustrations are beautiful. The way they tell the story is beautiful, and I really enjoy it. There's nothing more special than spending time with grandpa. And then the last one I have is Imaginary Fred. Oliver Jeffers is one of my favorite illustrators. Um, just because a friendship is imaginary doesn't mean it is not real. I also really like stories that make you that the message isn't so plain that you really have to reach a little further to find connection. I feel like that's what this story is an example of for me and that is important to really talk about interpretation and um, yeah I really <laughs> like this picture book. I have like having it. I love having it as a part of our word collection. All right you guys so made it through another book haul. Let us know all the things. Do you have any of these? Have you read any of these? Are any of these in your current library? Or are they on your list of things to watch out for? Let us know all the things in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Remember that life is so very full of lessons and our goal as always is to live and to learn. <laughs>